And away from the war front, trouble continues to mount for Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. In the latest setback back home, Israel's Supreme Court has struck down a controversial law pause, pause, passed by the Netanyahu administration. Well, on Monday, the Supreme Court ruled 8-7 in favor of striking down a contentious law that had triggered countrywide demonstrations for months. Well, the new legislation passed by Israel's right-wing government had weakened the judicial powers. The provision had struck down on the Supreme Court's ability to quash certain government decisions. And the law was part of a judicial overhaul, which led to massive protests across Israel. For 39 weeks, thousands of Israelis took to the streets every Saturday, protesting against Netanyahu's move to weaken the judicial system. Now, the critics feared would severely undermine Israel's democratic inst institutions. The Prime Minister's party has called the Supreme Court's decision to strike down a provision of the, judici of the judicial overhaul, and I'm quoting here, opposition to the nation's desire for unity, especially at a time of war. Israel's justice minister has also slammed the verdict, accusing the top court of quote-unquote taking into their hands all the powers. Well, the court ruling comes as a major setback for Netanyahu as the leader is currently in the middle of a corruption trial. The proceedings had earlier paused after the deadly October 7th attack, but the trial resumed on December 4th. Netanyahu is facing a slew of charges including fraud, bribery and breach of trust in three different cases which were filed in the year 2019. And with the Supreme Court thwarting Netanyahu government's attempt to dilute judicial power, there remains concern over how the simmering constitutional crisis plays out for Israel's longest-serving prime minister yet. And for more on this, we are now being joined by Colonel Rich Outson, Senior Fellow at the Atlantic Council and the Jamestown Foundation. And he's joining us live from Washington, D.C. Welcome to the broadcast, Colonel Outson. Always a pleasure to have you here. Good to be with you. Right. Now, Colonel Outson, after months of widespread demonstrations, the law has finally been struck down. The question being, is this the end of the matter for both the public and Netanyahu's government in Israel? I don't think so. The, the uh, timing of this is interesting. Of course, the uh, judicial calendar does not always line up with the geopolitical calendar. And the, the fact that Israel is engaged in a major uh, conflict at the moment, uh, the war in Gaza, at the time that this comes uh, to fruition, this, this uh, new judicial decision, is a sensitive matter. I think most Israelis are united in wanting to see Israel take care of its security concerns with regards to Hamas and its ability to uh, attack Israel and conduct terror uh, operations. And yet, uh, the majority of the Israeli population was also very much against this uh, judicial reform. So I, I think in a democracy, it's messy. And I, I think that uh, what we see coming out now is not necessarily going to sway the course of the conflict that we see, but it is definitely swaying the course of uh, Netanyahu and his coalition's ambition for this radical uh, judicial reform they've been pushing for. And Mr. Outsen, uh, how will this verdict make matters uh, worse or rather impact the Israel-Hamas war? Well, I, I think if we look at the U.S. as a sort of a analog for this, uh, what we see is that you, you first in a democracy have uh, overwhelming uh, sort of uh, coalition or uh, agreement uh, sort of uh, to, to take care of the immediate security threat. And everything I've seen with regards to Israeli public opinion shows that they all want to make sure there's never a terror attack like what happened on October 7th again from Gaza. So I, I don't think this is going to change uh, the, the sort of mainstream Israeli view on stopping Hamas terror coming from Gaza. And yet I think this is definitely heavy handwriting on the wall for the Netanyahu administration with regards to their very ambitious goals for rewriting uh, the social contract in Israel. So I, I think this is not today's business, uh, but this is the day after tomorrow's business, and it has very big implications for Netanyahu personally. 
right, Karl, last you speak of how this will have implications on Netanyahu personally. And the word it comes at a very precarious time in Israel when the country is at war uh, with Hamas. And we've seen uh, plummeting popularity of Netanyahu itself in the country. But talk to us about uh, the impact of this verdict on Netanyahu's corruption cases. He has a, a, a bribery case and uh, three different cases which were filed in 2019. Yeah, well, I mean, generally speaking, uh, I, I think the judicial establishment in Israel has been very skeptical of Netanyahu and his, his interpretations of how his own personal business and how the executive branch, so to speak, in, in Israel and the political branch uh, relates to the judicial. I, I, I think, uh, to put it maybe over simply, the, the judicial uh, branch and most of the opposition in Israel, which is probably over half the population, uh, think that uh, he has not observed the separation of powers necessary in a democracy. So I, I think what we'll see is you know, the, the um, same sort of thing that happened ultimately with uh, previous Israeli leaders who overstepped uh, kind of their domestic mandate. And now, look, I, well, I want to make this point. In Israel, there is a strong consensus on self-defense. There's a strong consensus on uh, defending yourself in war and against terrorism. But there's also a strong consensus that no political leader is above the law. And I think there's a real chance that this is a sort of a bellwether marking that uh, the, the Israeli general body politic views that Netanyahu has overstepped that. Turn of events out there in Israel at the moment, but thank you so much, uh, Colonel Alsen, for joining us and sharing us with uh, with us your insights. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.